everybody. Welcome to Daily Space for today, May 15th, 2019. And I'm your host, Annie Olson. Hi! It is a Wednesday, so you all know what that means if you've been here before. It's spacey craft type news instead of spacey science because I, I apparently am getting good at understanding spacey craft type stuff. So, first up, as always, because everybody's already asking about it, is the launch tonight. So, there are a bunch of launches this night, or this week, you know, between now and next Wednesday, but this is the launch that everybody's really excited about. And the launch tonight is uh, technically, if we're going by UTC time, it's technically tomorrow. It is May 16th, 2.30 a.m. UTC, but for those of us that, you know, are in the Americas, it'll be uh, May 15th at 10.30 p.m. East Coast. If you're on the West Coast, that's 7.30 p.m. Launch window is 90 minutes. It is not an instantaneous launch window, so it could go up exactly at 10.30 or it could go up closer to midnight. Eastern time. So there's that. Um, this is a Falcon 9. The core has been launched before. I don't know which mission. I am so sorry. Um, and there will be a drone ship landing of the core and they intend to use it again. And the drone ship is going to be, of course, I still love you. So the ship's already in place. They've already done the static fire with the payload already mounted and yeah so let's telestar 19 in iridium 8 were its previous missions thank you kerbal and larry weird and proud says this is the first reuse of a, of a fairing that's pretty exciting so <laughs> um here's the picture that i wanted to show you guys so on the left is all of those satellites. There are 60 satellites, 60 Starlink satellites packed in there, loaded into the Falcon fairing. And for comparison, in that same Falcon fairing is, you know, a Tesla, because why not? That's actually probably a uh, image from before when they launched the Tesla into space. I'm, I'm not even joking. There's a Tesla in space, if you don't know. Um, Sea Death says that it's a 30,400 pound payload, which if I don't know how to convert that to kilograms. So, but yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot in here and yeah, they are pretty much flat packed. They're in there pretty tight. It's kind of amazing to me. Uh, apparently these are not the final version and they're not fully capable. Uh, they're highly capable. I guess they're missing the laser interlink system that the future systems will have. And uh, Elon's already... Hey, thanks for the host, Uncle Bill. Elon's already said that he expects much to go wrong. So I think SpaceX is just treating this as a dress rehearsal or live fire training exercise, which is always slightly terrifying. And, um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of satellites and it's mildly terrifying, especially next to that Tesla and you see how much space is in there. So, all of these satellites are for the Starlink constellation. Well, for the start of the Starlink constellation, this is a image of what they expect the finished constellation to look like. It is going to be another, uh, it's, it won't be the first, it'll be another satellite constellation that will provide internet and phone services. A lot of people are pretty excited and they're hoping that they can ditch their own internet and things in, in favor of this. I'm not sure of the advantage of that. It's not going to be anytime soon. There is another 
satellite constellation providing internet to remote areas of the Earth already up there. I believe it's called OneWeb or O3B. I think it might be O3B for other 3 billion. Um, so yeah, it's the end goal is to provide internet. So that's cool. More satellites to provide more internet to get everybody connected, which should help. It should help get more people connected. So, and I imagine it, they will do sat phone stuff with it too. So, but yeah, remote areas where there's no internet, this would be incredibly important. Um, yeah. It's not fun. I don't know how many of you have ever lived or been out to a rural area where there's no cell service or there's very limited internet. And if there is internet, it's like dial up or DSL where the speeds are slow and everybody in the city who's used to fast internet speeds is like, why don't you use the internet? Because it's slow and it's expensive. And there's, that's actually another digital divide is how fast internet speeds are. So yeah, yeah, there are places in America where you don't have anything other than dial up. There are places in America, depending on which side of the street you live on, is what kind of internet you, you know, kind of have. And some places have data caps, even in places that are highly connected, they have data caps. And I happen to live in an area with decent internet speeds and no data caps. So, you know, <sighs> internet, it's important. Access is still a struggle for a good portion of the population. All right, so on to the next launch that's supposed to happen this week. Oh, this launch will happen at, or rather on May 17th at 1500 hours UTC. That's 11 a.m. East Coast, 8, 8 a.m. West Coast. As far as I know, there is no live video. If you know of live video, please tell me, ping me on Discord, ping me on Twitter, tell me. I will happily, happily get up and stream this. So yeah, it is not common for Chinese launches to be live streamed. It has happened once and I have co-streamed it. I do not know enough Chinese to navigate their social media and that's just it's very difficult for me to navigate their social media and they want a phone number so yeah no um so what are they launching we've talked about when they're launching what are they launching this is going to be another navigation satellite it's Beidou and in the uh graphic you can see Big Dipper that's kind of I think that Beidou means Big Dipper so, um, yeah, it is, it's another navigation satellite. Uh, as far as I can tell, it's for improving reliability through redundancy. This is, they have like three generations. The first generation is essentially retired completely. The second generation, which the satellite is one of, is... I think the last one of its generation to be launched. And the third generation is still in the testing phase. I don't think they've launched any of those. So yeah, um, what does it do? Beidou is another global navigation system. So you have US GPS, you have Russian GLONASS, and you have European Galileo. So it's just another one of that, quite frankly. Um, I'm just reading my notes. But yeah, it's just it's just another nav global navigation satellite. I said GLONASS. Uh, GPS, GLONASS, which is Global Navigation Satellite System, and Galileo constellations. So this is just the Chinese version that other countries have been working on their own. Japan has um, 
the tiny constellation that's just essentially pulls in data from the other constellations and works on making sure that there's really good navigation for Japan. So not unheard of. So China is launching another satellite on May 20th. There's no set time yet. I could not find a lot of information on this. This is going to be the Yaogan 33, a remote sensing satellite. And I honestly could not find any information on this particular satellite, just the other ones in the program. So I do know it'll be launched on a long march for Charlie. So this is not a small satellite, or it could be more than one satellite. It could be a tiny constellation. I literally do not know. Um, they've launched tiny constellations or tiny sets of satellites in the Yogan program before. And yeah, I, I really don't know. Um, they use a couple of different technologies with the remote sensing satellite. Civilian media says this is for like watching crop, you know, growths and other things. And, you know, of course there's always people saying it's a, you know, to help with military operations. It's a remote sensing satellite. It does what it does and it collects a whole lot of data. So yeah, that's literally all I know about this satellite. I don't even have a pretty picture to show you. So on to the next launch that'll happen, you know, within a week or so, we're talking about the ISRO. ISRO is finally doing another launch of the RISAT to Bravo. Uh, it's a radar satellite. It's going to have synth synthetic aperture radar. And I couldn't really find any pictures of the, um, of the satellite itself, but I was able to find a few pictures of them putting the rocket together. So on the left is a view of the two jointed segments of the core stage, mo core stage at the mobile service tower. And on the right is the hoisting of the third. <coughs> Puck has strong opinions on this, apparently. So, on the left, they're putting together uh, a view of the two joint segments of the core stage. And on the right, they are hoisting the third and the fourth stage. So I imagine that's the fourth stage going on to the third stage. I'm really not too sure. Um, I do know the satellite itself is only 300 kilograms in mass. It's 152 liter bottles. And apparently there's a whole bunch of other info I, I didn't get. So uh, Puck's saying they're doing it wrong. Puck probably is saying they're doing it wrong. But yeah, this is supposed to go up on the 21st. I'm not sure if they have a time yet. Oh yeah. 11.30 p.m. UTC, so that will be 7.30 p.m. East Coast and 4.30 p.m. West Coast. And yes, I totally intend on streaming that because I stream India launches for, for real. <laughs> um, there's, they're only going to use the core stage configuration. There will be no um, side boosters. Oof, oof. Okay, so that's all the launches that are happening this week. And now we have a teeny tiny update on our favoritest, you know, spacecraft that could, Barry Sheet. So as a reminder, Barry Sheet launched in April, April. And it was the first private spacecraft to orbit the moon. And it was supposed to make a soft landing on the moon, take some pictures and video and send them back. It was originally a competitor in the Google Lunar X Prize, which would have uh, involved landing on the whole prize involved to win, landing on the moon, taking photos and videos, 
moving 500 meters, taking more photos and videos, and then that was it. So, oh, it launched in February. Thank you, Ambius. See, I knew I'd screw that up. I knew I'd screw that up. It launched in February, and it... I just remember April. Was it April when it landed? Would have landed in April. Thank you. See, I knew I forgot something. Thank you for the correction, Ambius. So, it would have landed in April, but it first touched the surface about 100 meters per second faster than intended. It did not have a soft landing. It did not have a soft landing. But we have pictures. We, find, we know finally where it's landed. So here is the impact site before. Um, not a whole lot to look at, some craters, so on and so forth. This image was taken December 16th, 2016. And here's the after, taken on April 22nd, 2019. So it's hard to see. And if you're still kind of struggling to see it, don't worry, I got you. So here is an image that, 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 here isn't, this is the same image on both sides, really. Of the, well, not the same image, the same landing site on both sides. The left is the one that I had just shown you, and the right is essentially a enhanced image, so you can see more of the subtle changes to brightness on the surface. So, um, at this scale, the cameras, um, the cameras used to find the location of the landing cannot detect if there's a crater. The, there's just, the scale's too big. The bar, the scale bar at the bottom is 100 meters. 100 meters. So, um, the full quote, though, is at the scale of the NAC image, which is what this is, we cannot detect a crater. Perhaps there is one, but it is simply too small to be seen where the low angle of impact, less than 10 degrees relative to the surface, the fragility of the spacecraft and the velocity precluded crater formation, think gouge rather than crater. The smudge is likely a roughened surface, more micro shadows due to the impact and disin disin disintegration of the lander. Surrounding the smudge is an area of increased reflectance up to 20% higher. This ragged zone spans 30 to 50 meters from the smudge and includes a ray that extends southward at about 100 meters. The higher reflectance was likely caused by gases or very fine high speed particles rapidly moving away from the impact site, which smoothed the upper layer of regolith and redistributed fine soil particles, which in turn increased reflectance. Whew. 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 So, yeah. Um, yeah. But we found it, so yay. I, I feel better knowing that it's been found at least. So there is a NASA experiment on there that probably would have survived um, the impact. And it is supposed to be smaller than a computer mouse, but I don't have a computer mouse. This is what I have. So there's supposed to be an experiment that's about this size that may or may not, or it should have survived the crash because there was no uh, moving parts and acts kind of like a whole bunch of mirrors so you can shine a laser at it and the laser comes back to you. But I, no word on if they have found that or not. So, yeah, yeah. Um, so that's, that's the news I had for you guys today. So there will be a berry sheet too. They are working on it and I'm really hoping they nail the landing this time because really they got, it got there. It was the little spacecraft that could and it got there. So, Incredible things, it just, 
didn't didn't stick the landing and I'm still bummed about it. So yeah. Alright, so I saw some bits from Ed Thompson. Puck, can you speak? Come on, speak! Ah! Alright, he's just off camera. You can probably see his shadow. And make it rain! And make it dribble on the desk for Tinker. So, now is the time to ask questions. I'm going to scroll up and read whatever questions that y'all wrote while I was doing um, new stuff. Um, actually, Paranor, there is something in my description that said uh, toilets. It says space toilets. No, there is no toilet on the SpaceX ship. They don't have a need for a toilet. Uh, oh wow, Kerbal was able to find the actual core identification. Do, 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 do. So somebody did the math and said that each one of those flat packed satellites is 227 kilograms. That's a hundred and let's just say 15 two liter bottles. 115 two liter bottles is one satellite in that flat packed, which give me a second I'll bring up the image again. 115 two liter bottles is one of these satellites. I just, I wonder how they're, if they are really flat packed and intend to expand upon deployment, I wonder how they're going to pull that off. So lots and lots of stats, yeah. Um, do, 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 do. Thank you for the correction. I, I knew I knew OneWeb and O3B were both doing constellations. I just couldn't remember which one had gotten up first, which is weird because I know I covered that launch and I know I've talked about it before. Uh, Do, 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 do. Larry says, I pay $73 a month for 200 uh, megabits per second. Uh, yeah, part of me is like, you get 200, shush. <laughs> As I think the most I can get around here is either 50 or 100. But it's weird though that that's the smallest uh, thing that they make. And yes, Astro B, I know that that is the, that, that the um, logo for Beidou is Ursa Major. It's part of Ursa Major. The asterism itself is called Big Dipper, but it is indeed part of Ursa Major. Or if you were wanting to look at it as, you know, the Little Dipper, it would be part of Ursa Minor. So I know, I know, I know. But a lot of people are like, Ursa Major? I'm like, yeah, it's Ursa Major. Toss more Cheerios for the dog. Um, DPI asks, hasn't India started building a navigation system as well? They have, they really have. Paranormal makes a comment, busy time for launches. It seems like there's either one week I either have like no launches to report on one week and then the next week is just all the launches. That's really what it feels like. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot. Um, do, 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 do. And yep, some, some more facts about Space Isle, 7th reach 
Seventh nation to reach the moon. First private mission. Or first private, or, you know, private company that's not nation. A lot of cool stuff about Barry Sheet. And there was a lot of uh, outreach education that went on too. So hopefully it was... I mean, I don't live in Israel, so I can't gauge on how much of a, I hate using this term, impact, impact it had on uh, space stuff, but I think it brought up awareness of, of it to a decent spot. I mean, there is even a plushie. Okay. Um, can Hubble do the moon? I don't no, um, I don't know if Hubble can do the moon. Part of me wants to say yes, and the other part of me is like, no. Um, it might be too bright. So, Refsmat asked, did anybody see the fireball this weekend near Chicago? No, I totally missed that one. Totally missed that one. Uh, Trillian asks, is there a picture of what they will look like unfolded and deployed? No. Um, I admittedly did my slides last night. Um, our instro made some additional notes for me. Thank you so much, Dave. Really, I appreciate it. And I didn't go digging this morning to find, to see if there were more, uh, images or not. So, all right. Bye, Paranor. Uh, do, 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 do. We are definitely cranking up the speed traffic. Uh, no word on live coverage for the launch for China. Um, they typically don't. Okay. So something about the image can't, or Hubble really can't image the moon. Thank you for that. Um, China typically doesn't stream or show a live broadcast of their launches. Like this is a very, uh, it's just something that happens. We we know that there's no live video expected. If there is live video, it is literally from somebody on site with their camera or their cell phone recording the video and uh, streaming it. It's not so much that they have something to hide, more like their media is highly censored and they like to put a good face forward. They don't want to publicize a lot of their mistakes and accidents and things of that nature. So they'll release all sorts of press stuff afterwards, after the launch, and they'll talk about, you know, the launch before it happens. But launches in China are really, really common. I think right now we have them beat for the year's space race by one launch. But China launches a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. Um, they have space, you know, tourism groups that go out to see launches. Like, these launches, especially, like, the big launches that aren't just satellites, because they keep sending satellites up. Uh, for more spacey missions, they, you know, get more of a crowd. But for more kind of... Excuse me more mundane uh, satellite launches, um, you know, it, it does the thing. So even when it's not a totally successful launch, we've managed to see images after the fact. So what will probably happen is I will dig up images afterwards of the launch and show you guys images then because Still images are a lot easier to share than video. They don't take up as much bandwidth. And, you know, keep in mind that China has um, their own, 
they're behind, you know, the great firewall of China. But they also have their own version of Wikipedia, they have their own version of Twitter, they have their own version of Twitch, they have their own version of Facebook. Um, so, yeah, they have all of these things, but they're not using the same things that we're using. So between the language barrier, the literal firewall that they are behind, and I've been behind that firewall once, and it's very weird to Google things that you know should bring up results, and then the results are just not there. Um, it's... And they have, you know, so they're on different platforms, they use different language, they literally have firewalls if they want to get onto the platforms that we use. And there's a lot to China and their digital things and their laws and uh, freedoms or what we perceive as lack thereof that I don't understand and really can't get into. But the biggest reason why it's difficult for us to find this stuff is literally because they are on different platforms speaking different languages. Um, yeah, and a lot of the, uh, you know, if you're not in a city, don't expect to have internet. Um, Ed, Ed Thompson says, basically, it sounds like they have their own self-contained domain within the World Wide Web. Kind of, kind of. Um, when I was there over 10 years ago, I was, you know, I was able to use Google. I don't think some of the social media sites that exist now existed then um like cell phones were a thing but like the cell phone i had over in china was not a smartphone so texting was really common and things of that nature so yeah oh i bet things have changed oh thank you for the bits rose yeah oh make it rain um yeah, they, it's, yeah, it's, a lot of this about China is beyond my, my knowledge and comfort to speak about, but, um, yeah, they, there's essentially, if there's a version of it that we're used to, they have their own version of it. And yes, to create an account, on Weibo, I think is how it's pronounced. You need a phone number and uh, yeah, yeah. So that that's awkward and yeah. So that's a really long answer to why they, they don't stream and it's Culturally, they're very different, and it's just how things are. So, any other questions? Because I'm like, I feel like I get put on watch lists for talking about Chinese stuff too much. Um, DPI says, on the other hand, they have WeChat or Alibaba. They do have Alibaba, so there is that. There are some bright spots. Um, I just don't see myself being able to afford to travel to China anytime soon. It'd be neat though. Oh, I don't see any other questions. So I'm gonna undock the lap dog so she can partake in the Cheerio gathering. And I am going to, I guess start looking up Wow, a flight to China to Japan via China is sixty percent of the of the price of a direct flight for me. Yeah, yeah. Whew. Because nobody wants to have a layover in China. Ah, uh, I don't even know if China does transit visas. I know when I went, I needed a, uh, I needed a visa just across the border. So, 
Um, I am going to look on Brain Bites to see who else is streaming. Doesn't look like that. Okay, so then I'm going to look on the Knowledge Fellowship to see who's all alive. Scroll all the way down to the bottom. I saw something with, with what looked like rocket clouds. Oh, um, EJ. EJ looks like long boy stream. Oh my, it looks like EJ is doing a marathon stream for the lunch tonight. And remember imaginary numbers from algebra. That is airline pricing. Ugh. Ugh. So EJ's on. So I think we're gonna raid EJ. This is literally. Your last chance to ask me questions. Um, I'm just kind of making sure I have everything lined up for how I'm going to need it to be lined up. Um, yep, edu education is limited, so EJ it is. And DPI says, Chinese airlines currently are cheap because they want to establish themselves globally. I believe it. Uh, I believe it. All right. So that was your daily space for today. May, May 15th, 2019. Um, I have been your host, Annie Wilson. Hi, I am not the astronomer. I know enough astronomy to be dangerous, but you can ask me about space toilets. Um, Dr. Pamela should be on tomorrow. And if I don't stream tonight's launch, Dr. Pamela will. So if you haven't already, give us a follow to get notified of when we go live later tonight. Oh, thank you, Wayne, for the bits. And, uh, wow, Puck, you all right there? You, you kind of tripped over everything. Puck, speak. Come on. That was weak. Come on. There we go. Puck says thank you. I say thank you. And... Make it rain! I'm going to find Cheerios everywhere. So, while I do all of the things that I do, um, the great long wall of text, yeah, um, I'd say last chance for questions, but I've already given you a last chance for questions. So, all right, I'm gonna start the wall of text. So, this, Daily Space has been a production of CosmoQuest. We do a whole bunch of other cool stuff too. But really it's 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 this and we have our moon mappers up. If you go to our website and you do moon mappers and you find a bug in moon mappers, please go to our Discord in the moon mappers channel and report the bug. That is the best place for essentially everyone to know that you've reported your bug. Um what else? Oh yeah, our host institution is PSI. That's Planetary Science Institute working in collaboration with Youngstown State University. Here in Youngstown, I think it's cloudy today, Ohio. Mm, we, mm, nope, nope, back up, back up in my head. So PSI is a 501c3 nonprofit corporation, which is really fancy talk for you know, your donations are tax deductible where laws allow. Speaking of donations, we are brought to you by you. So thank you for all of your donations, your bits, your pledges, your subscriptions, your merch purchases. <gasps> I think I got it all. But most importantly, thanks for being here. You know, follows are free. I totally understand if you can't afford to do any of the things I just mentioned, but follows are free. Come hang out with us. Hanging out and chatting with us is free. Hanging out on our Discord, you know, is free. And there was another thing I meant to mention. Oh yeah, so as far as streaming, if you give us a follow, first of all, you'll get notified of our streaming, which is Sunday through Friday. We do not stream on Saturdays. So Sunday through Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern, which right now is 1700 hours UTC. Monday through Friday is daily space. This, what you just watched. You know, when you have me, it's mostly spacecraft talk. When you have Dr. Pamela, it's mostly science stuff because she's the astronomer. 
and she can digest the space, you know, the sciencey stuff faster than I can and explain it to you guys better, you know, faster, explain it to you guys better than I can. Um, and yeah, oh, Sundays. Sundays are also another day that I stream and I colorize space telescope data. I should be streaming this upcoming Sunday and yeah, come watch me colorize. I had it somewhere. It's a couple of interacting galaxies from Spitzer, which is not a telescope I usually do data from. So come enjoy me. Come, you know, sit and chat with me and I guess enjoy watching me thrash. Oh, and I think that's, I think that's all. I think that's all. I think that's all the word, world of words of text. So I'm going to awkwardly roll the credits. Thank you again to everybody that's tuned in. And um, I will, oh yeah, and we archive everything on YouTube. And I will see you all either later tonight or on Sunday, or if somebody finds a live stream of that, you know, satellite launch, then. But uh, until then, be awesome. Be kind to each other if, skies allow and you don't live in Youngstown where it's always cloudy look up enjoy you know the sky and have a good insert time of day here morning day afternoon evening night and yeah I'll see you all next time bye <coughs>